If you're trying to break into cybersecurity and you find that popular certifications like CISSP require you to have five years of experience, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll take you through the certification path that I would personally follow today if I was trying to break into cybersecurity. These are certifications that don't have any experience requirements and also have the best bang for your buck in terms of career progression, career opportunities, but also in terms of growing and developing your skills in order for you to become a cybersecurity professional. You can call me Unix guy. I've been working in cybersecurity for about two decades. When I started my career, I didn't have any career mentors. So I decided to create these videos in order to help you to avoid making the same mistakes that I made and to be the mentor that I've never had. The first certification that I recommend is usually a certification that will take you through the definition and basic concepts in cybersecurity. And for that, I have two recommendations for you. The first one is certified in cybersecurity from ISC2. ISC2 are the providers for the CISSP certification. They are known for their high quality and they are highly recognized by employers. I really recommend this certification because it doesn't have any prerequisite background of knowledge. It doesn't assume that you know anything. And also the good thing is both the training and the certifications are absolutely free for now. So I recommend that you don't waste any time and go straight into doing this certification. Alternatively, you can do CompTIA Security Plus. CompTIA Security Plus is a really popular certification. As I said, it takes you through the definitions and the basic concepts in cybersecurity. It's a nice little introductory certificate that I recommend for anybody starting out in cybersecurity. Now, before you go on and ask me, do I need the Network Plus before doing Security Plus or do I need CCNA? The answer is no. I discussed this in detail in this video. So if you wanna argue with me about that, so I recommend that you do so in that video. Now, the second thing that I recommend you do after you do your basic definition certifications is penetration testing certifications. Even if you don't plan on becoming a penetration tester, I think doing penetration testing certifications are super underrated in the industry because they make you really understand the cyber attacks really really well they give you a much better perspective on later on when you implement controls and detections and response like i see a huge difference between cybersecurity professionals who have done a little bit of pen testing and those who have never done pen testing you can see that in their recommendation you can also see it in their confidence when they talk about how to defend against cyber attacks now for me personally when i was trying to break into cybersecurity, i really wanted to be a penetration tester. I wanted to be a full-time hacker. The only problem is back then, the only certification and training that was available to me was the OSCP from Offensive Security. The issue with that certificate is it's not beginner friendly and it's very, very frustrating, especially if you're someone who doesn't have any experience in cybersecurity or penetration testing. Now, fast forward to today and the good news is we have eLearn Security, which is the first certificate that I recommend in penetration testing. eLearn Security Junior Certified Penetration Tester or the EJPT is an absolutely amazing introduction to penetration testing and the reason why I'm a big fan of it is because it's fully lab based. You get to practice what it actually means to do a cross-site scripting attack or an SQL injection attack or a brute force attack. It will give you those hands-on skills, you get to practice and you get to understand these concepts at a deeper level. And at the same time it doesn't have that massive massive commitment that you need to make if you want it to be a full-time penetration tester. And again before some of you ask me what about the certified ethical hacker from EC Council. I absolutely don't recommend doing the Certified Ethical Hacker because it's just about memorizing a bunch of concepts and doing a multiple choice exam. Now the third type of certifications that I recommend once you've done your basic foundational certificates and penetration certificate, the third one would be certifications focused on stopping cyber attacks. So this is the realm of a security operation center or a cyber security analyst. The certificate that I recommend you do is the CompTIA CESA Plus and just be mindful that if you've done CompTIA Security Plus before and now you're doing CompTIA CESA Plus, the CESA Plus is a little bit harder than Security Plus. It's a challenging certification, it needs more time commitment, it needs more studying, but it's not an impossible certificate, especially for someone who've done, let's say, Security Plus and then EJPT. Once you do the CESA Plus, these concepts will all make sense. Everything is tied in together. This certificate will take you through the basic techniques that we use to defend against cyber attacks. The contents are absolutely amazing for this certificate and it can prepare you to work in a security operation center or to work as a cyber analyst. Now another option for you if you don't want to do this as a plus is from Elon Security. That's the Elon Security Certified Incident Responder. And again, I'm a big fan of this because it has a hands-on lab component. Now a bonus tip before we finish this video that I want to talk about is SANS certifications. For those of you who don't know, the SANS Institute is a massive provider of cybersecurity training, one of the oldest providers of cybersecurity training, highly respected training and certification 
certification provider. If you do a SANS training, then you can do the GX certification. The only problem with the SANS Institute is the price. Usually the cost of their training course, which is a five days training course, sometimes it's four, but the cost is something like $8,000, which I understand it's a lot of money. The good news is there are ways to get the same training and certification for a lot less money. I talked about this in detail in this video, and I'll put a link to this video in the description box below. But for those of you who went and watched that video, I talk about the work study program. So if I was just starting today in cybersecurity, I will apply to the work study program literally any chance possible. In fact, I personally have done that for three years in a row up until I was accepted into one. And the beginner certification that I recommend from SANS is none other than the SANS GX Certified Incident Handler. The GCIH is an absolutely phenomenal certificate, especially for those starting out in cybersecurity. It takes you through the most common types of attacks. It takes you through the hacker techniques, tools, and it also teaches you how to protect against those attacks. It has a little bit of a lab component and the training is absolutely fantastic. Employers know and respect SANS certifications. And if you're wondering what to do after you've done the certifications that I recommended, the next step for you would be to specialize. Choose a cybersecurity specialization and go deep into it. I curated a playlist of cybersecurity specializations. I've literally created a video about each cybersecurity specializations. I talked about what the day-to-day -day job looks like, the pros and cons, and I've also talked about training and certifications that can help you work into that specialization. So I'll see you there.